everyone and welcome. On this channel, I always enjoy the opportunity to be able to showcase some awesome brands and products that I think many of you watching may be interested in. Admittedly, I'm pretty selective when it comes to what brands and products that I choose to showcase or review, but when I received an email from Scale3DRC and took a look at what they're offering, I knew this was definitely something that I wanted to share with all of you. Scale3DRC offers a large selection of RC crawler body STL files for anyone to purchase and print. There is a very large variety of different bodies available. Although understandably none of them are officially licensed, they all seem to take very heavy inspiration from specific full-size vehicles. One thing that I think is cool is that you'll not only find bodies replicating popular trucks that you'll see RC versions of all the time, but also more unique vehicles that you wouldn't find unless someone has scratch built one. It's also cool how some bodies have different variations available, such as crew cabs, long beds, short beds, and other options. All dimensions, including the compatible wheelbases and widths of each body, are listed, and many of these bodies are designed to fit popular crawler chassis like the SCX-10 and Trailfinder 2. I'll be leaving links to Scale3DRC's website and social media pages below in the description, so be sure to check them out for more information and to see their list of products. Also towards the end of this video, I'll let you know how you can get a discount at the Scale3DRC store, as well as give yourself a chance to win a set of STL files for a Scale3DRC body of your choice. I decided to print all the parts on a TiVo Tornado printer that I was sent for review a while back. At this point the printer is completely stock, aside from the addition of a bed cable strain relief piece. This particular one I found on Thingiverse, and will be sure to include a link to it below in the description. The purpose of this support piece is to prevent the back and forth movement of the heated bed from loosening the wires that power the heater. As you can see, this part is simple to print and install. All you need aside from the printed support piece is a couple of cable ties to secure the wiring loom. Also, don't forget to level the bed after installing the support. A little while back, Prima sent me a small selection of filament to try out, and I figured this would be a good opportunity to test it out. I've used up just about all of the PLA filament at the time of making this video, and I've been very pleased with it. I do a lot of printing with PLA, and I really like the nice smooth outer surface this filament has been consistently producing. The filament has also been smoothly flowing through the nozzle, with no trouble living up to the name EasyPrint. One thing to note is that I've found this filament doesn't seem to sand quite as nice as some other PLA filaments I've used. So if you're printing parts that you plan on doing a lot of sanding on the outer surface, you may want to do some experimenting with different brands to find out which one you like the best. The EasyPrint PLA is certainly something I would buy and use again. I'm looking forward to experimenting with the clear PETG, which will come in handy for making clear parts in the future. The first body that I printed is called the H2500, which is one of their earlier designs. This body reminds me a lot of a mid-70s Ford pickup. I printed each section using PLA filament, although using ABS would allow for the use of acetone vapor to smooth the 3D printed layers. Since I don't currently have any enclosure for this printer, there really is no way that I could print large ABS parts like these without warping and potentially other undesirable defects. There was still some warping that took place while being printed using PLA, but nothing too bad, especially being an off-road truck body where to me the warping just looks like some minor body damage sustained while off-roading. I won't be going for a shiny show truck look with either of the bodies I'm building. This body I printed using a 0.3mm layer height with the 0.4 nozzle that came with this printer. It took a lot of hours of printing and some work to get all the support material removed, but the finished parts looked pretty good, though there will still be a lot of post-print finishing work ahead. Thank you. 
Before printing the second body, I wanted to install a new .3 nozzle. The process of doing this is very straightforward, and is pretty much the same process for changing the nozzle on a lot of different 3D printers. The .4 nozzle was very tight from the factory, so I ended up needing to remove the entire hot end to get the nozzle loose, but after doing so it was easy from there. I also installed a new hot end silicone sock. I'll post links to both these items below in the description. With these parts installed and a fresh roll of Prima PLA ready to go, I began printing the second body, which is the PN89 SUV. This body heavily resembles a first-gen Pathfinder, which I've wanted to build an RC version of for a while, so I was excited to see that they offer this model. Still not a flawless print, but an improvement over the first body. I ran out of the light grey Prima filament and swapped it out with some darker grey filament, which is why the back and the hood are a different color. Again, there is a little warping in a few spots, but it's no big deal. After all the body parts are printed, next comes the tedious and not so fun process of sanding the outer body smooth. Although using ABS and vapor smoothing the body would eliminate the need for all this sanding, one of the drawbacks of that process is that it will often smooth and distort small details, such as the gas cap and panel lines, so be careful if you are smoothing the parts this way. After the exteriors of the body sections were starting to get smooth, I used a two-part epoxy to glue each of the sections together. This epoxy also doubles as a nice way to fill the gap between the sections. After allowing it to fully cure, I sanded the transition smooth. To help further smooth the transition, I applied a second layer of epoxy that I again let fully dry and then sanded smooth.
At this point, the bodies were already starting to look a lot better. To get a better idea of how they were looking, I applied several thick coats of primer to not only see what still needs more sanding, but to also help smooth the surface. The bodies are coming along nicely, but there is still more work that I want to do before painting. The more work you put into the body at the stage, the better the finished result will look. I'll be picking up where I left off in this video at a later time. If you're interested in getting a set of STL files of your own, be sure to check below in the description for a discount code you can use at the Scale3D RC store. I'm also giving away a set of STL files for the body of your choosing. I'll be announcing the winner in an upcoming video where I complete the post-print finishing work on these bodies. Anyone is welcome to enter, just be sure that you are subscribed to this channel and leave a comment below including the hashtag giveaway. One thing that I ask if you do decide to enter is to please make sure that you have access to a 3D printer with a large enough build platform. I'd really like to see these files go to someone who will be able to print and assemble the body and get it mounted onto a chassis. I want to thank Scale3DRC for reaching out to me and sending me the files for these bodies. And I look forward to getting them finished and getting them mounted onto a chassis. I also want to thank all of you for watching and be sure to be on the lookout for some new build videos coming later this month. Until then, I wish you luck with your RC projects and I hope you have an awesome day.